Good day. Welcome to Calculus in the PM. I'm your host, Mr. Sindaka. This lesson is brought to you by the refreshing taste of dill pickle coke. I do add pickle juice. It's good. It's got saltiness. Sweet and salty. Anyways, sugar free though. It's Coke Zero dill pickle. Anyway, derivative of a function. We talked about this. This is really the slope formula here, right? If you take the slope formula and you reduce this distance h here, reducing that, that's a limiting process. You apply the limit, h approaching 0, to the slope formula. We call that a derivative. And there's going to be shortcuts. And already, some students have seen, I know Fiona has anyways, someone was assisting her with stuff and says, hey, there's a shortcut for this. There is a shortcut. And we're going to learn it probably on Monday. But when I say, and I was pretty clear of this, if you see, whether in my class or if it's in uh, university, you're likely to have questions where it says, use the definition of a derivative to find. That means you have to use the limiting process. Once it says, use the definition, OK? And that also means. Even if you know shortcuts in chapter one, you can check your answers quickly. But when it comes chapter two, I guess. When you come to that test, that test, see we say um, Wednesday, October 18th, you will use chapter two methods, which are limits, not the shortcuts when we come across. I'll remind you again. Anyways, that's the definition of the derivative. But what I want you guys to know because when you're problem solving is, you've got to know a description of the derivative. What is the derivative? It's a formula that gives you the slope of the tangent line at a point on a function. What's the derivative? So really, you just have to have in your head derivative. Oh yeah, slope of the tangent line, blah, blah, blah. Because your questions will say, what is the slope of the tangent line at? Such a, and you'll be saying, hey, I need a derivative. Or it'll say, what is the equation of the tangent line? Well, for the equation of a line, you need a slope. Hey, I need a derivative, because the derivative is a formula. OK. So I'll keep reminding. Then we looked at an example of how to use this. And I asked you to do another one. Now, the example here, I kept it to a square. Then this example here, I got you started on this. It's a lot of work. Good thing there's going to be a shortcut. But here, I'll just uh, pause this here. You guys are working this out. OK. So when you work it all out, do the algebra. Hopefully, no mistakes. It becomes 4x minus 3x squared. That's the derivative. I'm going to just reemphasize that by putting f prime of x beside this. It's implied because I kept using equal, equal signs as it went down, right? Anyways. And now I have a derivative, that means I have a formula that could give me the slope of the tangent line at any domain value, right? OK, well, that's nifty. Let's see what problem B is. What does f prime of negative 4 represent? It just asks you what the, s oh, user above answer, I just skipped to C. B, what's f prime of negative 4? I'm putting negative 4 in there and just doing arithmetic, right? Now, you can use your calculators, but get used to doing arithmetic without your calculators, OK? Because 2 thirds of your AP exam is without a calculator. And this would be definitely expected here. Now, I don't insist that you show this. I'm doing this for instruction reasons. If you can do this in your head, which I think a lot of you can, 3 times 16, 32. Then 48, right? It's positive. Now, negative 16. Ah, 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 I did the 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Why did I do that? I caught it. I did the 16, 3, 48, thank you. So it's another group of 16 onto the 48. We've got 64, right? Negative. Okay. okay, now, what does this represent here? I guess I should have put a little b in here. 
See, I actually have a hard time getting 100% on things because I do make arithmetic errors. And I'm prone to them when I'm explaining things. I'm not just, I gotta be quiet and I make fewer errors. I really do know how to do arithmetic. But what is f prime of negative four? What does this represent? That means the domain negative four. Okay, I think, just wait, so someone else was gonna say? Yeah. This is, is negative 64 is the actual value of the slope, right? Is the value of the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 4. So if you graph that, you would have something quite negative there, like really steep down, negative 64, that's a heck of a slope. Anyways, hey, I basically rehashed the description of a derivative, eh? In that sense. Question. My question is, is that delicious? Okay, well. Because it says, it's like 4x plus 2h minus 3x squared minus, what is all the other stuff? Like it doesn't cancel Are you talking this? Yeah. Where'd that come from? No, like when it go after that? Like ah, I'm ready to evaluate the limit here. Mm -hmm. H approaching zero, because I'm not, I won't have the indeterminate form. When I have H on the zero. Oh, it gets rid of all the H. Yeah, yeah, so I put in zero here, zero here, and zero here. Gone. That's, that's that. Good question. A, B, C, D. Find the coordinates of two points on this curve at which the slope of the tangent line is 1. What the heck? I keep thinking back to the uh, description of the derivative. The derivative is a formula that gives you the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. So if they say the slope of the tangent line is 1, I need the derivative equaling 1, right? That's why I keep going over this. OK, so that's the description. So the derivative. Is the slope of the tangent line is equal to 1. What is the formula? 4x minus 3x squared. Hey, this is a quadratic. I'm going to be able to solve it using old school algebra methods, right? I'm going to just pause. So, do you know how to do arithmetic by hand? These are your two coordinates. Just clearly identify things on a page. Because I know sometimes you start working left and then you go to the right side and sort of start fresh again. I, I can, I'm fine. Make it easy enough for me to follow, okay? But, and circle your final answer, if it, especially if it's ambiguous where the heck it is, right? If it isn't the last thing you have written down. So, in this case, it wasn't the last thing. I have two answers. Okay. Now, this was something you may have worked out. Hopefully you did. One other thing. Not one other thing, there's a couple other things. Now, the main definition, the one that we've shown you, limit of h approaching zero, f of x plus h, minus f of x all over the letter h, that's the main definition of a derivative. But there's some alternate things. And I put not as useful, but you should be aware of it. This is the derivative at a point. It's a variation of what you guys have already been doing. It works the same and it uses a similar argument. We'll take a look at it here. This is at a point where the x value is given as a. Is the li uh, that's the limit you're approaching. So if a was 2, x is approaching 2. f of x minus f of 2, and it would be x minus 2 here. But in this case, Differentiate, find the derivative of the given function at x equals a. So that's the first question. Then try it at x equals 4. Let's just see this here. How does this form of the derivative work? And be able to recognize this. Is this, well, if I only saw this part here, what does that resemble to you? What formula that you're used to from previous courses? Slope. As long as you're limiting a slope, you're probably finding a derivative, right? So that's how you recognize other variations of the same thing. 
So find the derivative at the given function of the given function at x equals a. So f prime of a, whatever that number is, we'll eventually have it as 4, is, well, from above f of x minus f of a on the limit. So limit of x approaching the number, a in this case, root x, then you plug in a, f of a, root a. Hey, remember, a is a number. 4, 16, whatever it is. So x is a variable, a is a number. Keeping that in mind, how could you factor or how could you arrange so that right now it won't work, you'll get 0 over 0, right? What do we do? Yeah. You x minus a and x plus a? Sure. Create a difference of squares. Great. You can call it the conjugate, but I like you to remember what a conjugate is. It's a difference of squares in reverse, right? My chords are... And the other way would be to factor x minus a as a difference of squares. But we'll stick this method because it's the one you mentioned first. Okay. When I do that, I've created a perfect square on the numerator. Boy, that board is really funky. You know, with the, it's like lightning. Or something. And, uh, anybody have like a strobe effect that makes them dizzy or anything like that? Yeah. You really do? <laughs> do you really? Bright lights flashing really fast. Does this bother you? Okay, because I, I I know what to do. But I just got to get the question. Okay, so root times root is x. We've created a difference of squares, so there's no middle term. My, minus root a times root a, so a. This is great because x minus a is on the bottom, and then the root x plus a. There we go. Now, easy street, right? This is a 1. I can apply the limit. I'm going to pause this because I, that's driving me batty. Okay, the root a plus root a. Wow, somebody's important. We got a mess. I'm just kidding around. You're on to ask. Okay. Now, my question to you that's the derivative, right? I'll emphasize that, f prime of a. What if I change the problem now instead of, say, x approaching a, I actually use the number 4 here? How would this have changed if I just said x approaching 4 here? And then it would be the root of 4. We actually know it's 2. But okay. This would have been 4 here, right? Everywhere you see an a, it would have been a 4. You'd end up with this, right? You'd plug in the 4, and so you'd have the root of 4 plus the root of 4, 2 plus 2. You guys follow this? It's the exact same, and I don't care if the number is 13. Negative, well, no, negative doesn't work, actually, because of the domain. You can't put negatives in there. Okay. So, really and truly, the other question says, what about then where x equals 4? I could just use this formula for any number and say, well, f prime of 4. 1 over 2 times the root of 4. And you could actually simplify this one. And 4. Right? Yeah. Why start from scratch if you've got the work done again? Now, a couple other things, and then we're set. Any questions at this point, though? It's a lot of algebra, actually, more than the calculus concepts that get people down. Okay. Some things here. I told you that f prime is the first way we're going to note a derivative. Besides f prime of x, though, other common notations. 
hey, if you have an equation that says y equals x squared, blah, 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 you might want to put the derivative as y prime, y tick mark, y prime. Now, you can use this, but you won't see it used as often. It doesn't name the independent variable. It doesn't say that it's a function of x or t or whatever. Okay. This is probably the most commonly used, dy by dx, or the derivative of y, the equation y, with respect to x. That names both the variable and uses both variables, x and y, and uses the d to mean the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, if you have a function, usually you use f prime of x, but you could say df by dx, not as common. This just means take the derivative of the function f of x, say. Now, this is the one that you're going to see the most, as well as f prime of x, okay? Or g prime of x, h of x, h prime of x, okay? So you use the primes a lot, and you'll use this a lot. Now, graphs of f and f prime. Think of this here. We could think of the derivative at a point in graphical terms of slope, as slope. You get a good idea of what the graph of the function f prime, the derivative, looks like by estimating slopes at various points along the graph of the original function, f. Now, remember in our course, and whether you're in this course or the regular calculus course, we can represent functions with graphs, charts, or the actual equations. The equations are what people get hung up on the most. But actually, the graphs are really important. Now, we can estimate slopes of graphs of f in units of y units per x unit at frequent intervals, then plot those estimates. We could. Now, let's just see here. It's a matching game. These, we're going to match with those below. Match the graphs of the functions with their derivatives. Now, just taking a look here. A. We might as well try this. What would the derivative value be approximately? Would it be negative, positive, or zero for this portion here? It's going to be positive. Let's say plus one. Because there's no scale on here, right? So let's just say the derivative, the slope, and it's a constant value of slope, so plus 1. What is then after this point? Zero. zero. It's horizontal. The slope of a horizontal line is zero. Now take a look for something that has a slope of 1, or a slope, a derivative value of 1, and then changes to zero out of the bottom choices here. Which one? B. B? No. Because it, it's a constant value of 1. It's definitely not A, because that starts at 0, goes up, and it's, it's... This is the only one that has a constant slope, constant value of the derivative, D. Okay. You follow that? And then it turns into 0. Okay. You didn't do it F2, constant, number F2. Yes, but it changes more than once. Yeah. Up, down. It's not constant. That's not, it's constant. But hey, let's figure this one out right away. Look at this. B. What would you estimate that to be? Negative, positive, positive negative, positive. Switches. For constant values, negative 1 plus 1. So that's F. You just brought that up. Friend. F is for friend. Yeah. Oh. Now it's the curvy ones. It's the curvy ones that actually uh, get tricky. You've got to do a little more thinking. Cause think of this. What would the slope be right at the edge here? I'm drawing a, a, a make-believe tangent line that'll disappear. What would that be right there? And what would the slope of this tangent right there at the ends be? Zeros, eh? And then here, look for zeros. They're the easiest tangent line portions to. Uh, so here, the derivative or the slope of the tangent line will be like zero here, approaching zero there. Zero here, and zero here. 
Now, any point in between here, positive or negative slope values? Positive, it's increasing, so positive. And then negative values, there, right? So in between, so positives and negatives. Now, do you guys follow this, what I'm doing here? Because what I'm thinking, I'll just blow this up a little bit, is that B. Here it's zero, here it's zero, but here it would be a little bit positive, a little bit positive, positive. You know what I mean? I don't care what the value is. Now, you said B. Let's see. Yeah, it's, uh, it's close to zero. It's zero and zero. I looked for my zeros first. Good. All positive values, they're changing. That's, that's expected because this changes. It's steeper. It's its greatest value in the middle. Then less. It's still positive. B does look like the right value. Yeah. It matches all the criteria. There's negative numbers on this portion. Now. Hmm. D. This is a negative value here, a negative value here, extremely negative there. And then, remember how we said you can't take the derivative at a cusp or a corner? So it will be non-existent here. And then positives. And I heard C. So a lot of negatives, nothing in the middle, and then a lot of positives. And it does seem to be zeroing out at the end points, eh? Getting closer to zero there and there. So C is a good match. I'll go with your answer. What about this one? It starts out at zero, ends at zero. Then in between, all positive values, right? Left to right, it increases. So it's going to look like a bell. Yeah. Zero-ish. Positive all through. Yeah, that's a good match. A. A. E. I heard E. I ignored you. Because think of this, F. At the end here, now, it's a half a circle, so it's approaching infinity right there, right? Here, then it gets to zero, then negative, approaching negative infinity at the other end. Down. Up. You see why that's a good match for the circle? Half circle. That's it. Now, I guided you through these. They'd be tough, but you're going to try some of those. Yes? I'm just confused to what these graphs represent. Like, the sure. first three represent like the graph, but then the next, or first six, I mean, the yep. next six, what is that? Is that the value? The values of the derivative. Yes. So if I just gave you a quadratic equation from left to right, I don't even care what the axes are. Zero right here. Positive or negative values to the left of the vertex? Negative. Negative. And then positive values. OK. So you'd look for a graph where it's 0, then positive values on this side, negative values on that side, right? Now, roughly. And this is where you're guesstimating. And we're not getting hung up on actual x's and stuff like this to understand from strictly from pictures. It, It'll be a nap. Yes? Sure. Little e? Okay, just wait. I can't quite hear, guys. Shh, shh, sorry. Little d. Gotcha. Let's just take a look at the one portion here. This portion. Okay. The, I, whatever, I chose blue, I shouldn't have, because this is blue. Right at the end here, it seems like it's close to zero, right? Negative value, really negative value of the slope. Now, I'm drawing in little tangent lines, right, that sort of touch once. Extremely negative, 
going even steeper and steeper in the negative direction, right? So I would look for something that starts at zero and gets more negative as you follow the slopes there. Do you follow the connection there? What the other side? The other side, oh well, yeah. How about it? Now, you can't have a derivative, so the derivative can't exist at a corner. So you'll have an asymptote. Then, right here, it's a really high positive value. Positive 1 million, I don't know. Positive 100. Eventually, positive 1. Positive 1 half. It's getting closer to zero then, right? all the little tangent lines that you can imagine drawn in. Use your pencil kind of thing if you want, because I can use disappearing ink, that's fine. But sort of put your pencil here, okay, really steep, not as steep. Getting closer to zero, pencil, pencil, like move your pencil along there, and that helps you estimate tangents. And then you see, ah. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative? I'll tell you what. Because on C, it's like negative slope. Tell you what, if this function here, I just moved some of this all into the negative. Does this function have any different derivative? No. If this function was right here, still be matched to the same derivative, right? As far as positive or negative for the original function, that doesn't because it's strictly the slope value. Is that what you're getting at or not? No, like, because you put C, right? And on C, the slope is like negative. Okay, the which C? C? Yeah, the bottom C. Okay, so this is the derivative values. All negative values, and these are all falling from left to right. All increasing from left to right all positive slope values from left to right. We'll continue on with that. Um, and if you want, we can sit and take a look at those. I'm going to just take a look at this. Right hand and left derivatives might be defined at any point of a function's domain. So left derivative, remember, these are limits. So you can do a left limit, right limit. The usual relationship between one and two-sided limits holds for derivatives. We saw a theorem that tells us this. One-sided derivatives can differ at a point. And here's an example. We have x squared in a piecewise, fun piecewise function with linear function 2x, hitched up at zero. So it's actually continuous. The derivative itself will not exist at zero. But you could say from the left, it's approaching this value. From the right, it's approaching this value. Now, just by looking at this, can you tell me, just by picture-wise, um, if we so, so we can notate it like this, f prime of 0 from the left. So on this picture here, because you can see this is a quadratic, and you know a quadratic would be like this, right? Symmetrical. That's right. What would the slope be from the left side? If this is all the information that you have is this left. What would, does it seem to be approaching as you hit zero? Slope-wise. It seems to be hitting the vertex, right? Zero. So you'd say, oh yeah, if I only considered information from this side, I would arrive at zero as my slope from the left. That's a left limit. Well, I'll just notate it like that. So I'm going to say it's 0. Now the right-hand side derivative, 0 from the right-hand side. Now do you notice the slope of the tangent line is, is less meaningful? Okay, so why is this not? Uh, like it's, okay, there we go, it's back. The slope here, the slope here, 
The tangent line is the line, isn't it? And it's the slope of 2, always. So the slope, as you get closer and closer to 0 on the right-hand side, is 2. Okay. So it's 2. Now, do you see the left and the right side limits? Because derivatives are limits. Don't match. So there's no f prime. Well, zero doesn't exist. But the left and the right limits do. Now, we were doing the limits just by picture, right? You could write out limit of h approaching 0 from the left, limit of h approaching 0 from the right of f of x, and use the appropriate parts. You can do that. <coughs> there you go. Yes? So there's no equation for the derivative of x. There's no equation for the derivative of x when you're, that works for every portion. You can have, you could have an equation for the Except for left the of 0 for the right of 0. Everything except 